Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Adam DeYoung, the Marketing Manager with National Positions. I want to thank you all for joining us uh, this morning uh, or afternoon if you're on the East Coast or overseas. Um, today, our new webinar is on understanding Google's Panda update. I'm really excited about this uh, the subject, and uh, we can tell by the, the popularity of the, uh, the webinar that uh, you are too, and this is probably because you've heard a lot of interesting stuff about Google and about uh, the so-called Panda update, um, which was announced uh, in March or April, and um, what this means to SEO, to your business getting found online, and really just the future of internet marketing, and we're going to go into this. So without further ado, uh, let's, uh, let's start it off. So um, the agenda today, um, this will be about a 30 to 45 minute webinar. We're going to keep it a little shorter because we know that uh, it's really a hot topic and uh, it's sort of a controversial one. So we want to open up um, a lot of time at the end to questions so we can answer quest specific questions that, um, you know, that might arise that uh, we don't address in the webinar. Um, but uh, the agenda will be, uh, first and foremost, we're going to uh, define the Panda update. There's a lot of great information uh, on the blogs, online about uh, Panda, but there's also some misinformation. So we're going to define Panda for you and really uh, explain uh, what it comes from uh, and uh, uh, how it's changed SEO and internet marketing. Then we're going to talk about uh, why Google made the change, why Google uh, decided to, to uh, change its search algorithm, uh, change the search results, and what... Uh, uh, results are now being looked at differently. Third, we're going to talk about uh, does Panda impact you? We're going to go over the types of sites that have been impacted by Panda negatively and then there are also, you know, uh, inversely a lot of sites that have really been helped by Panda and if you're thinking that yours, you don't know if your website has been hurt or helped, um, you're likely to know by now. It was in March and April so if, uh, if your site was hurt, you, you would know by now. And uh, subsequently, if uh, you have second or third tier pages that have gone up in rankings, it was likely a result of uh, Google rewarding you after Panda. Next, we're going to talk about the opportunity. Uh, and this means we're going to go over very specific examples that you can, uh, and tips for your website, for your marketing strategy, what you can do to really take advantage of this. Um, there, there's been a lot of doom and gloom or uh, negative. Uh, things being said or consternation from um, webmasters and uh, businesses online about Panda, but really what you, you should do is look at this as an opportunity. You know, um, there are a lot of businesses that aren't aware of Panda or um, aren't going to make the changes and if you can act uh, swiftly and, um, you know, successfully, you stand to really gain a lot more exposure and ultimately, you know, create more business for, for yourself. Uh, then we're going to talk about the National Seed Program, which we're really excited to announce. This is a new uh, uh, con uh, seed. It's a new seed program, so it's a new sort of content development program that we have launched, and that we are now uh, we're really just launching now. And it, a lot of it has sort of been developed after Panda. There are a lot of uh, internet marketing companies that have really thought about how Panda, how to take advantage of Panda, and this is one of the ways uh, we've decided to. Uh, to, to go forward. Um, then we're going to go into an action plan since this is a university uh, webinar we're going to give you very um, specific takeaways what you can do after this webinar to really uh, you know uh, improve your campaign optimize uh, your online business for Panda and uh, as I said we're going to take um, a little more uh, time for Q&A just because this is a uh, an interesting subject. It's a very timely subject, and a lot of people have uh, have have had have had questions about it. So we're gonna spend some time answering those. So the Panda update. Um, what is it? Well, first uh, let's go let's go over the name. Uh, Google named the Panda update after one of its uh, engineers, who uh, is an Indian uh, uh, engineer. His nickname is Panda, or I think it's his, his name is Panda. Um, and what he did is he introduced. Um, a learning machine into their search, um, their search algorithm, which essentially simulates how a human will interact with a website. So uh, it's almost like artificial intelligence to some extent. So what they're doing is they they've created a way for the crawlers to go to your website and really analyze the site as a user would. You know, how, is the content strong? Is it good content? Is the user experience really good? Is the site designed well? It does it navigate easily? You know, is it designed in a way that helps the user or sort of spams the user with really unnecessary information? Is it the kind of site that you would 
trust um, to give your credit card to? Is it the kind of site that you feel comfortable putting your information in and signing up for a contact form? All these things, you know, even just a year ago, Google was really having tough time um, differentiating in the search results which were the websites that were really optimizing well and then which were the sites that were actually providing a lot more value to the user. So the Panda update really, it's, it's refined its search. It hasn't completely altered everything about it. We don't want you to, to come away thinking that, oh my God, SEO is completely different. It's not. A lot of, mo the elements are the same. They're just being um, sort of tweaked here and there and altered and improved so that the, so that they pro Google provides better search results. They provide the results for websites that are m most likely to help the user for what they're searching for. So the key questions, <clears throat> excuse me, the key questions you need to ask yourself, the key panda questions um, about your website is, can't, is, is there's, a, there's a few of them. We're going to quickly go over them. These are, these are really the questions you need to ask yourself and uh, figure out what the answer is. Um, and this will you know, probably tell you if, if your site has been helped or hurt by Panda. Um, number one, can visitors easily navigate your site? Is it an easy site to move around? You know, is, is the navigation um, you know, helpful? Is, again, is the user experience you know, a pleasant one? Um, the second one, is it obvious what each topic page is about? You know, that's, again, is, is, are there good uh, headlines? Is the content written strongly? Is there, you know, good calls to action? Are there good, um, is the web design sort of seamless and clean? Is, uh, is the copy, you know, easy to read? You know, the third one, is the content original or aggregated? Obviously, unique, fresh content is, you know, is one of the pillars of SEO, and this is only uh, g g becoming more so. Um, you know, next is do the ads on the page obscure user access. Now a lot of websites <clears throat> do not have ads on their page, um, but there are a lot of websites that were negatively impacted by Panda because they had way too many ads on the page or way too many graphic elements on the page that were really obscuring the user access. They were really making it difficult for the user to sort of move around the site and find exactly what they need. So you would ask, your, you could ask yourself, well, why, how is Google able to now measure you know, where things are on the page, on my site. Well, this is really why Panda is such an amazing thing, is this learning machine is able to sort of simulate the user experience. And it, it can look at the ads or other graphic elements on the page and decide, you know what, this is not a user-friendly web, web page. Uh, the next is, is the primary focus the user need or the business need? Now, obviously, you're trying to generate traffic to for your business. You're trying to get your business found so you can uh, you know, find more clients and create more leads. Um, but there's a way to do that that um, still gives gives the user experience, gives the user exactly what they're looking for. And it oftentimes, you know, creating a website and maybe optimizing a sales funnel does both. It optimizes for a business need and a user need. And we're going to go into how you can do that. Um, and then the, is the content on the page authoritative and valuable? Um, you know, again, you really want to provide good, strong, valuable content. Become an authority. Um, does the website answer the query better than other sites? Again, that's what the search results are all about. And does the site have one quality page, but many low quality pages? And we're going to go into content themes and how to create solid content across the whole website to support the overall website subject authority and, and in so doing, uh, create higher rankings and create more traffic. So why did Google make all these changes? You know, wh why, why did Google change its search algorithm when obviously it is probably the most used uh, web utility on earth? Well, the simple answer is it's to improve user experience. The way you really need to look at it is that those first 10 p results, when you type in a query and, you look in, in, and someone is looking for your business online, what are, what are those first 10 results? So that is the Google homepage. And Google realizes that, that their homepage is not google.com, which even if you go to google.com, it's a search query, it's a search, it's a search function. They know that what's keeping them you know, popular and what's, what's keeping them above Bing or Yahoo is the power of its search utility, that people trust them. People come to their website and they will type something in and they will find the, on that first page the most relevant 10 results. And, that, and that's not just about content, that's about user experience, that they're, going to be get, that they're going to get 10 websites in those search results that are very user friendly 
and our authorities on that subject that they're searching for. And Google's, you know, again, Google's not a nonprofit search organization. They are a company that the lifeblood of their company is that advertising dollar that you see on Google's website. So they need to keep people on their website as much as possible. And the way they do this is they create this homepage of search results. So, and they've decided that the, the best way to do this is to improve user experience. So that's making sure it's, yes, it's findable, it's a searchable website, but is it desirable? Is it easily accessible? Is the, can the user get there and find what they want? Is it valuable? Will they come to this website and, and, and decide, yes, you know, I was searching for this product or service and this website is exactly about that and I'm gonna fill out this contact form. You know, is it credible? Again, will you, do you feel comfortable calling that number? filling out that contact form, putting in your credit card information if it's an e-commerce site and you're gonna buy clothes online perhaps. You know, and again, usability. That's really ultimately the, uh, the, 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 the big question. How user-friendly is this website? So the next thing is, um, does Panda impact your website? Again, you would probably know by now, and most of our uh, clients, because we you know, do uh, implement best practice SEO, most of our clients weren't negatively impacted by uh, Panda, and the few that were, we were able to respond quickly and um, successfully. But there were there are sites that have specific traits that may um, have not been Panda friendly, and then there are some that were already doing Panda friendly uh, practices. So the sites that were helped by Panda, they've got lots of stre strong, fresh content. And again, we're going to go into that. What you can do to create strong content, you, it needs to be unique and it needs to be um, fresh. It needs to be created on a continual basis. The next is a good use of blog. Again, that ties into the content. You know, If you have a, a best way to create good, strong, fresh content that is user friendly is with a blog because that's gonna answer specific questions from your uh, target market. The next is an easy navigation, a good user experience. You know, is the, Do you come to the website? Is the navigation bar, is the footer easy to, use you know are those second tier pages easy to find are the calls to action easy to find is the contact form easy to find is the phone number easy to find you know and, and all these things are really what are that's what's gonna in the end make your site more uh, popular on Google that's gonna make Google push you up the rankings and get you more traffic and then it's a uh, is it does how is the website performance on the overall does your site have a low bounce rate you know are people coming to your website and looking around, they're interested, so they're staying on the site. They're going to through the sales funnel, you know, sort of uh, swiftly and easily. You know, is there a lot of time on site? Do people stay on that website, look at five or six different web pages? Is there a strong conversion rate? You know, it, it, are you getting people to your website and then filling out, uh, a, you know, a checkout process, con filling out a contact form, achieving the goals that you've created and that your project manager has created with you on Google Analytics? We're going to go into this specifically because a lot of the things that you can do to improve your rankings, you know, in a post panda environment are things you'd want to be doing anyway because they're best practice techniques because really what they're going to do is once you've gotten traffic, they're they're optimizing for conversion for the sales funnel. So a lot of um a lot of this um internet marketing strategy it's becoming more seamless. It's not strictly about SEO and then conversion. You want to sort of use them to play off each other and they're going to help your rankings, help your traffic, and help with the sales, uh, the sales funnel itself. Um, is your website a subject authority? You know, does it have content that um, answers, you know, is it, is it um, you know, uh, for instance, a lot of websites um, do sort of focus on one keyword, and they sort of just repeat that one keyword, and they're able to get rankings for that one keyword, but they've decided, okay, you know what, that keyword is by far the most popular, so I'm just going to optimize for that one. Well, Google's saying, no, not, not so much anymore. We want, we're going to give rankings to a website that optimizes for a basket of related keywords, you know, that optimizes for seed keywords and then the, the related keywords to create a content theme. And that content theme makes you a subject authority. And that creates great rankings across all related keywords to that subject. And then finally, is there, there's a boost in traffic for several pages across many search terms. So you're not just getting good rankings for your homepage. You're going to get rankings for your second tier pages, you know, for a resources page, for a services page, for a contact page. And this is ultimately what you want because the more pages you have ranking, rankings and the more 
rankings for different keywords, ultimately the more exposure and the more business you're gonna get. The site's hurt by Panda. Um, again, it's sort of the, uh, the opposite of all the traits we're talking about, the negative, uh, the negative aspects of them. You know, there's a lack of content. The content isn't very fresh, or it's, aggregate, it's an aggregate site, or it's not very unique, or you've got a lot of the same content on different web pages. Google's gonna hurt you for that. Um, you know, there's poor on-site optimization. As we're gonna talk about the three pillars, um, one of which is on-site work, you know, that's still one of the silver bullets. So sites that don't have good on-site work, that don't have good title tags, um, you know, meta content, you're, you're gonna be especially hurt by Panda. You know, is the, poor, is the navigation poor? Too much ad clutter? Again, really high bounce rate, low time on site. You wanna, you wanna avoid that anyway because, you know, once you are paying for someone to come to your website, you want to make sure that they're converting as much as possible. So you're, you're improve, you're, you've optimized the, the uh, online business process. But even if you aren't doing that, you might get hurt in the rankings anyway. Um, there's no social media, there's no blog. You know, there's no uh, integ integrated social media. Again, we're going to talk about how you can integrate Facebook and Twitter and even Google Plus now into your website and how that's going to generate more rankings, generate more traffic, um, because it's, it's all about user experience. And then again, poor user experience. If the site is just not user friendly, if there aren't, aren't comments, if there's not a comment section in the blog, if you can't you know, tweet or, fit or post to Facebook and like something, if you can't get from the home page to the second tier pages easily, then you're, you're really gonna be hurt. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's talk a little bit about the opportunity. Um, there's a lot of information about Panda we want to give you really sort of practical ta takeaways. What you can do um, right now um, to start to improve your rankings improve, and improve your online business. Again, the three pillars of SEO. Now, this is still the th this is still sort of the crux of your campaign. This is still this is more than the foundation. It's it's really the focal point of your campaign. So everything we're talking about in terms of user experience and and conversion rates and optimizing the sales process, that needs to build on these three pillars. So you still need to do content, you still need to do on-site work, you still need to have a lot of a lot of links coming from a lot of different websites. You know, these are still the three primary factors in your rankings and in your online uh, business. Um, so we don't want we don't want you don't we don't want to confuse you. We don't want you to think that all of a sudden pandas happen and like it completely changes SEO. It's not the, that's not the case. These are the three, the three pillars and for the, you know, I, I, for the foreseeable future, unless something really radical happens, these are the three things that are gonna ultimately decide a website. So, um, but going forward, what you can do now to, uh, to optimize for, for Panda is uh, create more quality content, M make, it, make it fresh. Uh, what we mean by this, by making it fresh, is the more often content on a, on a web page alters, um, the more often the, the crawlers from Google will, in, will index your page. The more often they will come to your site and they're gonna, the crawlers are going to look, oh wow, there's new content on this page. Something new is going on, let's take a look at it. Well, that's, that's the key. Even if you're not changing much, just the fact that a little bit is changing and it, that it, it attracts the crawlers to come to the website and see what's going on, that's that's the key because the more often the crawlers come to your website and check it out, the higher your rankings are going to be. You know, the, if you look at CNN.com, that's a that's a website that's getting crawled several times a day, and it's not a you know it's not a coincidence that it has great great rankings and great traffic across you know really popular keywords like you know President Obama or you know foreign policy or you know uh, you know. Um, debt ceiling, whatever these huge keywords are that people are searching for, CNN has great rings for it. it's because people are coming to the site all the time. So th this doesn't mean that you need to change everything on your website, but maybe, you know, creating, um, you know, little, little additions here and there on your homepage, you know, integrating your blog with the rest of your website. That's really key because the, the, the more often you can optimize content and add content rather than take away, but just add and add on to what you're already doing. The, the more the crawlers like you and the more Google likes you. Um, so the next is improving web, website navigation. Now this is, not, this is um, not as you know quickly done as content. You know if you have a blog you can just start blogging more often or you can figure out 
maybe what on your homepage you want to change, you know, once every once a week, just just to optimize uh, for content. With it, with website um, navigation, you really want to huddle with uh, maybe your project manager and ask them what they recommend you doing on your website to make it more Panda friendly. Again, this is um, since Panda happened, you know, everyone in our company has sort of been, you know, living Panda every day and we've been having meetings about what we can do to optimize for Panda and we've got, there's a lot of great sort of brain power going on right now about what, what you can do with your website for website navigation. So um, this isn't an easy fix and we also want to Warn a bit, you know, if you tear up your site and completely change the navigation, it could have inverse uh, effects because it's a lot like sort of shocking the roots of a tree. You know, it, it's um, it hurt. It can hurt your rankings right away. So you you definitely want to talk to your project manager or, or um, your in, whoever your internet marketing consultant is before you go and start making a bunch of changes to your website navigation and a bunch of changes to the structure of your website and the architecture because changes, especially unnecessary changes, they're gonna hurt your rankings right away, most likely. And maybe in the long run, they'll improve them, but they might not. So you really need a game plan beforehand. But in the long run, yes, you wanna, you wanna improve the website navigation. And you looking at this, um, Looking at the slide, some of the things you, you know you should take away from this slide that um, it's again it's very logical, it's very user friendly, it's simple. In the end, website navigation, you know, when in doubt, keep it simple. It's got a very clean, um, uh, sort of appealing navigation on the left hand side of the bar, and it's and it's got optimized for keywords as the title of each of these sort of uh, category pages, you know, it's got financial services, you know, then it's got benefits of financing, benefits of leasing, lease offers, financial offers, loyalty offers, applying for financial payments, all these, all these things that are actually keywords and that's going to help in the rankings. So optimizing your website nav bar also is, is a part of sort of improving website navigation. Um, but it's really, um, it's, it's a simple process. You want to keep it simple. You want to make, you want to, Take, so you sort of want to tone it down. You want to take away a lot of the clutter you're going to find on a website. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Next is the social media integration. Now, a lot of your websites are already integrating uh, Facebook or Twitter um, or maybe even YouTube. But if you're not, you really, really should think about doing this. You should think about how you can be using social media for search. Social and search is really starting to intertwine much more. And now that Google has really launched its Google Plus program, which is a new social platform that they've integrated with the rest of their website, it's only become, gonna become more so. Um, because Google Plus actually is now being um, factored into Google Website, um, to Google Webmaster Tools and to Google Analytics. So you, you wanna have on your website um, widgets for Facebook, like this page, like this blog post, tweet this blog post, tweet this page, you know, plus one this, this, this blog post. Um, obviously the more um, interaction and the more likes and the more retweets and the more plus ones you get on your webpage, that the better your rankings are going to become in the long run. But also just having these integrated on your site. The Google crawlers come to your site and recognize it and they see that, oh wow, this is an interactive website. So it's not only providing with a lot of information, it's interested in what I think. It's trying to make, it's trying to make it easier for me to share this page and inter interact with this, with this company. I'm gonna give this better rankings. So just the fact that you're gonna have those widgets on your website are, is gonna help. And, this, and again, this, a lot of this is logical because not only is it gonna help your rankings, but you want that just from a practical standpoint because you want people sharing your business online in social, in a, in a, on a social network. Because if they are, they're likely to have really, really positive things to say about your business, and that's leveraging your existing client base with their friends and followers. And you're just gonna get, you're gonna get more qualified leads. And social media leads are the best leads possible because they come with a you know, built-in credibility. They come with a recommendation from someone you know and trust. It's like eating at a restaurant when, um, when someone says, oh, you should eat at this restaurant. I really recommend it. You know, social media is, you know, the online version of word to word, uh, um, uh, word to mouth uh, marketing. So, you know, it's going to help your rankings. But in the end, what it's really going to do is help your business. So, again, this is another thing where Google is, you know, doing you a favor by just bringing this to your attention. This is a best practice, best practice for your internet marketing strategy that you want to implement uh, either way. But it is going to help your rankings if you have these. 
The next is, <clears throat> excuse me, improving website performance. Um, here we've got a slide of um, you know Google Analytics, very typical slide. It's going to show it shows your traffic from on a month to month basis where it is, and it shows the website performance underneath that, a bounce rate of thirty six percent. That's actually a a pretty good bounce rate. You know, a bounce rate at thirty percent is a is a terrific bounce rate. So uh, you know, anything in in the thirty that's thirty six percent. That's a that's a strong bounce rate. You know, anything below thirty uh, percent, you should be doing cartwheels. That's a really, really uh, strong uh, uh, marketing uh, marketing strategy to have. That's that should be the ultimate goal. Um, it's got a time on site of about three minutes. Again, that's really good. It may not seem like a long time, but you know, the way the user the, the user experience works now, we all have very very short attention spans. You know, we all have many tabs or many windows open. We're using Google, we're using Google, we're using Twitter, we're using Facebook, we're on our mobile device. If you can keep someone on your website for three minutes, the chances are you are going to convert a lot of your traffic. And, um, and there also it shows new visits. You know, how, how many people are returning visits and how many people are new visits. You know, if you can get a lot of returning visitors, that's also, that's a great website performance because Google's gonna say, you know what, someone liked this website enough that they came back to it a second, third, or fourth time. And if it's an e-commerce site and people are you know, shopping on your site and they're buying more clothes on your site, they're buying more of your services, Google's gonna say, you know what, this is great user value. Someone came to the site, purchased something on this site, and came back and purchased it again. That's, you know, that's, we're gonna give this better rankings because in the long run, if, if a bunch of people use this website over and over again and use this service over and over again, other people probably will too. So um, when you're thinking about how to improve website performance, we have a conversion optimization program. And we did a conversion webinar a couple months ago, and it really hits directly at this. It's optimizing the sales funnel. It's um, creating landing pages and that make it easier for your user to get from the homepage to the goal, to contacting you, to filling out a contact form to purchasing on an e-commerce site, to calling you, if that's ultimately what you're trying to get them to do. You really need to optimize the sales funnel, not just um, for your homepage, but throughout the website. And this is becoming only more so. You know, so, um, and at the end of the, the webinar, we're gonna give you a, uh, an action item to, to take, and it's gonna actually be doing a free conversion review that we offered in our conversion webinar, but we're offering again, because um, you know it, this is an instance where SEO and conversion are sort of, um, you know, meeting. It's becoming a more seamless marketing strategy. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, now we're going to go into the National Seed Program. This is something we're really excited about because as we were talking about with the need to create content theme, which means not just optimizing for a keyword, but optimizing for a, you know, a bunch of related keywords to make your site a, web, a, a subject authority and, and to create rankings for dozens of, uh, of keywords and to just raise your overall website exposure online, you need to create these content themes. And then our national seed program is designed to do this. So it's uh, still in the beta form, and we're just sort of launching it now, but um, this is really sort of what we're looking at doing uh, going forward. Um, again, you can, go to the, you can go to this website, nationalseedprogram.com, um, and your, your, pro, your project manager can talk to you about this. Um, what it does is it simulates uh, the search engine crawlers. We've, we've created our own, we've taken our own proprietary technology to create the software. <clears throat> excuse me, the software on nationalseedprogram.com, which which will crawl your website in a matter of minutes, it can, and it can and it will read all the content on your website. And it doesn't just look at keyword density. You know, this is another thing that's changing right now with Panda. It's not just about keyword density. It's about also about keyword relevancy. Where on the page is that keyword being mentioned? What's the, what's the diversity of your, your subject keywords being mentioned at different places on your page? Is it in the title of the page? You know, is it in the meta description? Is it in the H1, which is sort of a headline? Is it in H2, which is like a subhead? It, how many times is it in the, in the body? How many related keywords are mentioned on this page that support the overall, the overall uh, subject? You know, so this is really what's changing about Panda, and we're really, really excited to announce this new software that we've developed that um, you know more accurately reflects what Google sees on your website. You know, a lot of people a year or two ago thought if you optimized for one or two keywords and you just sort of repeated those throughout the website and threw it in the content, that would be enough. And you know, if your website's still getting good rankings, 
that's great. But what, the, what you want to be doing is always getting more exposure. You know, you want to get more bang for your buck with organic search results. You're not paying per click. So if you can optimize for a bunch of keywords, you know, that's best. And that's really what we're, we're, we're hoping to do with uh, the National Seed Program. And so, so once we, we've, uh, we've crawled your website to assess the keyword relevancy, we start to identify themes. You know, and this, this is, you know, again, this is combined with a lot of competitive analysis, with keyword analysis, we research your search space. What is the main theme of your website? You know, um, okay, maybe it's insurance. Okay, great, um, you're an insurance company. But there's also subcategories, there's also different kinds of insurance. So what are these sub-themes that you see on the page here? Well, there's auto insurance, there's car insurance, there's home insurance, and if you're, if you're an insurance company that offers all these things, your main theme should be insurance, but you should have themes on your website that are optimized for these sub-themes. So that way, you're driving traffic for, yeah, if someone types in auto in, or insurance, but you're also getting, you're also getting uh, leads for auto insurance. You know, or home insurance, you know, or car insurance. All these, so, so you're getting you're getting related keywords to, to drive just a lot more traffic, and ultimately, more traffic means more business. So once we've um, once we've identified the themes we want to optimize for with the content, we, we we try to create the themes. So this is a perfect example. You know, the outdoor pizza oven company. These are three different these are three different themes that they've got: mobile pizza ovens, pizza oven kits countertop pizza ovens. Now this wasn't done by accident. This company obviously went in and did a lot of uh, research on its search base and decided these were the three themes that people were searching for. So their, I'm sure their overall theme was you know, pizza oven company. But they then found three subcategories that people were searching for more specifically. And they decided, you know what, if someone searches for pizza oven company, we want to be found. But we also want to be found for, for maybe countertop pizza oven. Because people ultimately or have a unique search pattern and it's idiosyncratic how you search for something is going to be different than how I search for something so all about creating content themes is making sure you're you're getting as many leads as possible for a variety of the same you know search the search results so that's that's really it that's really um where what the takeaway is again um, we don't you know we don't know everything about pandas just yet Google has offered sort of breadcrumbs in the months that it's been launched, but um, these are, the, these are the, the first um, sort of signs of how it's changed definitively. So there's a lot on the, online about what's, what's changing, where it's going, but we wanted to give, give you this presentation to show you exactly what we know for sure definitively. And uh, these, are, these are the changes that we know of. So your action plan, what you can do right away, what you can do going forward, because we know that <clears throat> you're watching this webinar and you might be thinking, you know what, this is a huge subject, what can I do right away? Well, these, these are the, the six things we, we really recommend, and this is going forward. Um, first off, get a free review of your company's site authority. Your, if you contact your project manager, or if you're not a client, you, uh, you contact uh, one, of our, one of our consultants, what they will do is they'll run a review of your website and one or two of your competitors' site. And they're gonna measure your, your content authority versus your, your uh, competitor's authority. So they're gonna, so, you know, if, you wanna one, if you're wondering why your competitor is getting more leads online and has more exposure online, this, is, this software that we've developed is really going to point out why. It's going to say, okay, well, you're optimized for these keywords while this competitor is optimized for these other keywords. Or conversely, they're only optimized for one word. You're optimized for like all these related terms, and that's why you're doing better. So th the first thing, yeah, contact your project manager. Contact one of our consultants. If you're not a client, you, know, you can get a free review of this website. Um, the second thing is contact, one, contact your project manager about integrating social media better. You know, integrating Facebook and Twitter, um, adding a, if you haven't added a blog, add a blog. You know, um, before Panda, two or three years ago, your website could get away without having a blog. Not anymore. Really, every website should have a blog because it's going to improve user experience and it's just adding more content. So all the way around, it's the best best SEO practice you, you, you can do right now. Um, and if you have a blog, blog more often. Open up the blog to comments. Respond to comments. As the website, as the webmaster in the blog, these are all things that Google's looking at. That Google is um, rewarding. Next thing, <clears throat> excuse me. The next thing you can do is um, measure your site's page speed. When we talk about website performance and user experience, um, one of the main main things is page speed because we all have a short attention span right now, 
And if it, we, we all have done this, we've all gone to a website and it's taken, you know, but four or five seconds to load and we are off that website. We went to Google, we searched for a product or service, that website did not come up right away and we went to the next website. So you do not want this to be your website because if that is the case, someone's, you're getting a lead, you're getting a prospect and then you're losing it and then they're going directly to your competitor. So um, you really want to improve page speed and this is something you can do you know, it's not, it's not a, you know, this impossible thing you can do. And in fact, right now you can measure your page speed. Go to uh, pagespeed.googlelabs.com, type in your URL, and Google will give you a grade, one through 100 of what, of your page speed performance. You know, um, this is a, one of the great features of Google Labs. If you don't know much about googlelabs.com, it has a variety of, uh, f of functions where if you type in your URL, it will measure you know, your page speed, your website performance, your con you know, the, 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 the layout of your website for conversion. We really, really recommend you take a look at Google Labs. Um, it'll give you a lot of great insight into what you can do to improve your, uh, not just your website performance, but your overall online business, which is really what it's all about. It's about creating, creating leads. Um, and then next, uh, get a free conversion of your of, uh, audit of your website. If you're, uh, if you're an existing client, uh, your, your project manager, uh, contact your project manager and they will, they will give you this survey. It's about a five question survey and uh, we will do a free audit of your website. We'll, we'll look at um, your website, we'll look at a few of your competitors and we'll do a quick like 10, 15 minute video and we'll, uh, we'll recommend things you can start changing right away to improve your sales. And then finally, what again, you want to improve your landing pages, you want to lower your bounce rate, and you want to boost time on site. Now, those are not things that are going to be done um, you know, overnight. And again, a lot of these changes, they're not going to be done overnight. You can, cre you can create new, fresher content, you know, better content. That's, really, that's relatively easy to do if you talk to your project manager about putting together a strategy for that. But um, these other factors about improving user experience, don't feel like you have to have, to have this done tomorrow. But what you should do is you should start to put in place these act, this action plan of, of moving forward with these different items and, sh and start to really get the ball rolling. So I, I really think that free conversion audit is the place to start because what we're going to do is we're going to tell you, okay, this is what we like about your website from a user experience and this is what Google likes and this is what is uh, going to uh, produce more sales in the end. So um, going to the conclusion. Um, Again, just broadening the perspective just a bit, um, Google is all, again, it's all about user experience. And, but, but user experience really is about um, you know, online business. What, it, not just getting found. You know, getting found is half of your uh, online business success. But the other half is conversion. Once people come to that website, um, are, do they find it valuable? Is it easy to navigate? Are they converting? Are they, are they going from a visitor to a customer? And while four or five years ago, these two steps were, you know, sort of walled off from each other. You know, you sort of had to worry about getting found, and then once you were getting found, you had to worry about conversion. Um, not as much anymore. You know, it's not the same thing, but um, they're, they're sort of, some of these f factors are becoming uh, more seamlessly integrated. They're so becoming more realized. So going forward, the future of internet marketing is some combination of social media, of search, of conversion, these all these three factors are really what are going to define your uh, your business's success going forward. Um, so again, we really we really want to thank you for for joining us this morning, especially if you're on the West Coast like us. Um, it was a sort of an early webinar, um, but we finished here at about a little. We finished about on time, so I'm gonna go to some questions here that um, that some of you posted. And uh, again, we got a lot of great questions, and I'm just looking through and. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, the questions and really just the uh, the uh, the interest. So, looking at um, here, one: Does it make a difference if the blog is on site or off site? Um, we prefer on site, truthfully. Um, you know, if the 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 better a blog is integrated on your website, the more you're going to get credit for it. Um, again, this is um, this is a bit tricky, though. What I really want to specify: It's very common. For a website to be set up and then you know to be set up set up on whatever hosting company you set your comp you you set your, your website up on and then you added a blog maybe through WordPress. Um, again, is it offsite? I guess you yeah, it's offsite, but it's not really a problem. What you want to do is just talk to your project manager 
or talk to your consultant and integrate, figure out how as an app, blo how this blog as an attachment can be integrated into the rest of your website. Um, there's a lot of great strategies that we can implement and we can get that web, that blog implemented. So yeah, if you were to start your website from scratch, if you were to build a, a website ideally from the beginning, yeah, the blog might be integrated, but it's not a problem. WordPress has a lot of great plugins and there's a lot of great sort of uh, programming that we can do that, um, that we can show you that we can sh you know sh show you the way forward of how to integrate um, sort of a, a, an attachment blog to your to the rest of your website and in doing so how you can use it to promote themes you know interlink to different pages on internal pages interlink to your home page um, blo the blog really even though it, it was added maybe as an attachment through a different um, platform it still can be a great boon to, to your to your rankings um, can I get a copy of the presentation? You know, um, we're gonna send out an email um, a little later on when the, the website we're gonna we've rec we're recording the webinar and we're gonna throw it up on the web. We're gonna put post it on online with the this presentation um, printed below it below the video. And I'm gonna email ev uh, everyone who attended um, as well as people who missed it who signed up. Um, so you will have it. You'll have access to it whenever you want. So if you wanna. You know, take notes, or you know, if we ran through something maybe a quick, little too quickly, um, you can uh, you can wa you can watch it then. We're gonna break it into chapters as well, so you can sort of uh, digest it in bite-sized uh, form. Next question: um, Won't putting a blog on my web page allow my competitors to see who my prospective clients are? Um, yes, but this sort of isn't really the right way to look at it. Your, there's so much information on the web. Your pro, your competitors already know who your prospective clients are. You know you need to look at it that way. And again, withholding information um, f from the from uh, from your from your community from your users is a common mistake that a lot of business owners make. And this is something where the internet has completely changed the the cult the uh, consumer culture, your customers culture, and their mentality. For the first time, you know, the internet is really, not to sort of uh, get uh, wax poetics, but for the first time in history, um, the sort of the c consumer c uh, business relationship has been completely uh, revolutionized because your customer has the power to interact. And if you're not interacting with your customers um, and you're not providing a one-to-one a, 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 um, a -one line of communication, they're going to go elsewhere because they are now, ex you're now expected to interact with them on Facebook. To post, po to post polls, to post contests, to interact with them on Twitter, to respond to customer complaints or questions, to blog, a, to blog, and then maybe um, blog about questions that you fielded in your comment section on your blog. You're all you're expected to communicate with your customers on this personal, more intimate relationship. And if you don't, you're going to be losing more business, uh, more potential business that way. So we really want to. Uh, really want to stress that you need to be using blogs, you need to be using social media, that is really what's going to keep your business in the long run. And again, if um, the, the culture of the, of all, the internet is, has uh, sort of uh, transformed to the point that when uh, other people who may be giving business to your competitors, if they find your website, you know, maybe they're a little unhappy with their service. Maybe the product is fine, but the customer service isn't good. If they find your website and they find that you're using Twitter and Facebook to answer uh, customer complaints or questions, to uh, to post really helpful, relevant advice that you're just giving away for free, really what that's going to do is that's going to create more business in the long run. So yeah, you should definitely have a blog. Don't don't feel that you know a blog is going to be giving away the company's secrets. Obviously, you don't want to give away your methodology in your blog. But you want to be giving helpful tips and useful advice that that really provide user value, and this is what Panda is all about. Panda is about rewarding sites that provide value and to the user. Um, again, um, boom, boom, boom. so here, social media on Facebook is it better to do a fan page or an actual profile? Um, I would do both. A lot of social media is about, again, now we're getting a bit into social media, but that's not so, so bad. Um, social media is about um, personal branding. The best, most, uh, we did a web, the last webinar we did on social media, um, we talked about sort of best practice social media marketing strategies. Um, and as we talked about then, the best strategies for social media are to build a brand around your personal, uh, per, your personal brand. 
So build your company around your own identity. That's because the, the internet is a very, very cold place. As much as the access to information is unlimited, you're staring at a screen all day. And even people who grow up with the internet are well aware of the fact that they're staring at a screen and they're a bit hesitant to just give their business to someone like that, you know, to this nameless, faceless company over a screen. If you can convince them that, you know, there's a person behind it and you're trustworthy and that you're uh, reliable and that you're effective and that you're responsive to your customers and you feel can and they feel that they've connected with you, you're going to you're more likely to get their business. So you want to do both. You want to build a you want to build a profile page. You know, um, you might, you know, myself, Bill and Adam DeYoung, I have my own, you know, profile page, but we also have a, a national positions fan page, a, a company page. You want to do both and you want to be posting back and forth. And maybe for your Twitter, it's, it's a good idea actually for Twitter to have a Twitter feed that's your own. If you're running a business, especially a small business, our, I, would, I would recommend maybe having uh, the, Twitter, <coughs> excuse me, the Twitter account um, be in your own name. You know, and then you can just define, describe yourself as the owner and operator or, you know, marketing manager of this company. So long as, you know, maybe uh, the owner of the company is okay with that. It's best to build a company brand around a person as well as, uh, as, well as the brand. That's the best way you're going to, you know, leverage your existing client base on social media to find, uh, to find more business. So here's a, this is the last question we're going to get to. And again, we thank everyone for coming. Um, how does Google handle black hat SEO techniques? It seems that they w don't want to tackle the issue. Over Mother's Day, all the major flower sites bought paid links on other sites. Google didn't change the rankings. So what, so what can they do to uh, move people toward white hat SEO? Um, isn't it hard to compete with sites that use black hat SEO? Um, actually, no. You know, that's really the short answer. Um, there was a great, great article that the New York Times did, uh, I think it was the end of last year or early this year, and it was really this sort of very, um, contra this very big expose on JCPenney. On the JCPenney was doing black hat SEO tactics um, to get traffic, and it was working for a few months, and then they got caught, and then they got banned, and then they weren't getting any traffic or any exposure online. So you know what, a black hat SEO technique, it, it's, it's a lot like someone doing something illegally. It might work once. But as soon as you get caught, you're sort of, you know, you're, you're screwed because um, Google is, um, you know, if Google catches you doing black hat techniques, they're going to drop you way in the rankings or they might just penalize you and not rank you at all. And then you have no, then you have no internet online footprint and then you have no online exposure. So, um, Google, no, Google is definitely um, rewarding white hat SEO techniques. They're definitely rewarding sites that do it the right way like we do, that improve user experience, that prov provide value to the user. Um, and the Panda update is just a confirmation of, of the fact that they're getting better at it, not, not worse. So um, again, we want to thank everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we hope um, you, were, you found this helpful and we, you found some good takeaways. Um, again, contact your project manager or one of our consultants about a free conversion review for, and a free website analysis and a contact uh, your project manager about the National Seed program about building content themes. And um, again, we want to thank everyone for coming and uh, we hope you have a great day. All right, take care. Bye.